After introducing Dolby Atmos-enabled speakers and how they work, we're now going to reveal the science behind these speakers and sit down with two of Dolby's top audio experts for a closer look at this innovative technology. So we've created a new technology in the Dolby Atmos-enabled speakers. In its simplest terms, it's a reflection of sound off of the ceiling. So that's an upward firing speaker. So to make that work, because if you take a normal speaker and just point it at the ceiling, it won't work. So it's a combination of very specific speaker design and characteristics that we define, as well as filtering that's in the speaker itself. Mm -hmm. So normal speakers have a wide dispersion pattern because you want to cover as much of the room as possible. But for a Dolby Atmos enabled speaker in the top firing speaker, we actually specify a very directive dispersion pattern so that you get as much energy off of the ceiling when it reflects. Now, Dolby doesn't actually manufacture the no. speakers. Um, how do you ensure a certain level of um, experience quality, let's yeah. say? So every Dolby Atmos enabled speaker comes to Dolby Labs mm -hmm. and we certify it. We test it to make sure that the dispersion patterns meet the recommendations and that they have the correct angle um, and that the pin of filter that's built into the speaker meets our specifications. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing about it is we didn't want to limit innovation from speaker manufacturers. So we made the requirements of the speaker design flexible enough to allow innovation so that you don't have to use one type of speaker. So we have manufacturers using uh, concentric drivers or like little arrays of drivers and mm -hmm. so even on the first version of the products that we've seen come in I'm very excited to see innovation right from the get-go and it lets them differentiate their products. So given that you're reflecting the sound off of the ceiling is the position as accurate as a, an overhead speaker? Accurate may not be the right way to think of it. The sound will be slightly more diffuse the high frequencies will have a larger sweet spot, both on the ceiling and as they reflect down to the ground, than a direct speaker mounted in the ceiling. Um, it, that adds to the sense of diffusis and envelopment in the scene, um, and some people prefer that over a direct firing speaker. So why do the Dolby Atmos enabled speakers require a fixed angle instead of a variable angle? given that the, the height of the speaker and the distance to the listener are going to be different from room to room. Yeah, so we experimented with many different angles uh, in many different rooms, many different room sizes, many different ceiling heights. What we found was 70 degrees was uh, probably the best balance between maintaining an, an optimal sound field for average listeners uh, combined with minimizing uh, potential leakage. So a loudspeaker firing up towards the ceiling will mm -hmm. leak some energy to the sides, especially at low frequencies. Uh, if the speaker leans over too far, it's leaking too much energy forward. If it's leaning too far back, um, the distance to the listener is now very short. Um, 70 degrees was a, a nice balance. Plus, it makes it easy having one angle for all the consumer devices. Because you don't want to task them with figuring out, oh, geez, now I have to become an engineer and calibrate Correct. Angle. It's, it's easy to, to get things non-optimal if you leave it to the consumer to, to play with angles. So if the sound coming from above the, the listener's head is already filtered, why add a similar filter electronically in the speaker itself? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, there's still some sound leaking uh, forward from, from that speaker. Not everything goes to the ceiling. Um, and so what we do is we apply a filter mm -hmm. uh, to accentuate that, that sense of height and ensure the perceived sense is that all the sound is coming from the ceiling. That filter is a function of how we perceive sound differently from different uh, directions. Hmm. So uh, our ears perceive sound from above spectrally in a different way to horizontally. And we look at the difference of those two spectrums and we apply a portion of that difference as this filter, this hmm. electronic filter. Wouldn't a speaker mounted high on the wall perform the same task? No. Um, objects have defined locations that they're supposed to be in and, and movie makers will that movie makers intend that objects are in certain spatial positions. And so if we alter those spatial positions in playback by moving speakers to the walls, we've altered the mix. We're lessening the canopy effect of the sound field around the listener. Well, when we went about designing and introducing Dolby Atmos to the home, we had a mission to make it sound better than it's ever sounded before. Mm -hmm. But we also had a mission to make it as easy as possible, easier than it's ever been before. We can't expect all consumers or most consumers to put a speaker in the ceiling. 
And so that's why we invented Dolby Atmos enabled speakers, because we want this to be mainstream, widespread, because the experience is magical. Well, there you have it, directly from the audio engineers here at the Dolby Laboratories. In our next video, we'll visit several manufacturers of the Dolby Atmos enabled speaker to find out how they're made and why these companies are so enthusiastic about this new technology. Until then, may your sound be all around.